What's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're gonna be going over a PVZ macro build order. It's been much requested. So let's hop into the first replay, which will be against the AI. I'll be showcasing the build, how it's played perfectly, and then I'll show a game when I play it. A little less perfect, but still pretty damn close. Now we're assuming uh, everything is normal, no early game shenanigans, no 12 pools. If you do struggle with 12 pool, be sure to check out my video on that, as I go into detail on how to beat that. In this case, we are assuming best case scenario. We're seeing a Zerg that plays hatch first, and that will go into six gas and a fourth base relatively quickly. And thus we get to play how we want to play. So we just get standard one gate expand, gate or well, pylon gate assimilator always rally your what is it your 19th probe down up to your natural this probe can build your nexus take some minerals and then build your cyber core in this case i don't take the minerals but it's it's nice to do here goes cyber core then goes back home meanwhile this probe is scouting for what kind of shenanigans your opponent will get up to all right so let's continue 21 gas 22 pylon Everything looking standard. Um, do note that we get Adept, Stargate, Stalker, and then Warp Gate. This is in order to get all of our gateway units in time. And Warp Gate is so quick nowadays that you don't really need it earlier. We chrono boot. <laughs> we chrono boost both of the gateway units. Both our Adept and our Stalker. Stargate goes down after our first Adept, obviously. You can scout with the Adept. You can keep it at home. I like the scout. Make sure there's a third base. Um, I like to poke into the main base to see if he's getting a really fast layer, perhaps. But not necessary, um, if you don't want to, of course. So we continue constant uh, pro production, put a chrono boost on our natural. Then we get our Stargate up. Once our Stargate finishes, we should have enough gas to start our Oracle. Do that as soon as possible. And once you have a chrono boost energy available, chrono boost, followed by a pylon and then a gateway. Make sure that your adept is always home before speed finishes so that's around 3 30 or at least that it's halfway across the map back home it should be able to make his way home then so second gateway together with the third pylon after you finish your first oracle you start chrono boosting your second oracle immediately and around 350 you take your gases um, now this is pretty cool what's going to happen now you get two oracles total then you get two gases, another pylon, you get a robo, and the probe that builds a robo, you can queue it up towards your third base. Now, on top of this, you see how I rally my oracle. I rally it towards my third, and then onto my first oracle. So if there's a, a couple of links here, your one adept and the oracle should be able to take care of that. If there's a lot of links, then you can wait for a warp in, warp in two more adepts and then go take it. Or perhaps take the second oracle home. If they build a lot of links this early in the game though, that's very good for you. Uh, it means their eco sucks. So that's a lot of indirect damage. You can delay your nexus for 15 or 20 seconds, no problem against that. That's completely fine. So once you build your third base, build a pylon there, position your adept in between the nexus and the pylon. Once your warp gate finishes, start one sentry, but don't use the other gateway. In case he does a link flood, you want to be able to warp in uh, a second zealot and pull back your oracles. I like to most of the time have a, uh, what do you call it? A recall available, and get, in this case I don't, but most of the time I like to have a recall available. So if he link floods me, I can recall my two oracles and go back home. Now, the moment we started our nexus and the pylon, the first two buildings are a forge and a twilight. Then we'll get an observer, continuous pro production, of course. So here's our first observer, or our first sentry. And you can do damage with the oracles. I'll go into detail once I show uh, the game that I played, how to get more out of your oracle. But this guy's an AI, so not great at defending. Once your robo finishes, you get an observer. Um, you add two more gateways. Don't chrono boost this observer, even though I do it here, that's a mistake because you won't be able to afford your immortal immediately after. So you need some time. Continuously build pines, make sure you don't get supply blocked. And then once money affords, get your immortal, get your plus one attack. And the lowest priority is charge, but it's still nice to get it, of course. After you have all of that down, your third should be done. Transfer the workers from your natural 
towards your third, warp in a second sentry, and at this point you should be able to send out a hallucination scout. Together with the observer and your two oracles, you want to find out how much gas your opponent has, and you want to match their gas count. So if you see six gases, you take six gases. If you see uh, four gases, you don't want to get more than four gases. If you see five gases, you can get five gases yourself. If they have three gases, well, tough luck, you already have four, so can't do too much there. Um, another important thing with this observer, the hallucination and these oracles is, is if you see continued roach production, um, so if you see six roaches, one immortal is fine. If you see 10 or 12 roaches, get a second immortal before you get the prism. But if you see no roaches or only five, six roaches, just get one immortal, then a prism, and you should be completely fine. So in this case, we're assuming we scouted our opponent and he is on six gas or we see a lot of drones building. That's also fine. If you're very good at reading the Zerg and you can count drones, then go ahead and do that. But most of the time, counting gases is a very consistent way to know whether the Zerg is all inning or not. Uh, once again, lower the gas, the more likely the Zerg is about to all in because all Zerg units cost gas. So get a Templar Archives, Prism scouting information if you want you can send out your second hallucination at this point as well and you should have full info and basically full saturation on three bases at this point um, at that point there's basically a couple of options if you're playing against roach hydra lurker or heavy roach hydra continue immortal production if you're playing against hydra bane or ling bane or uh, ravager ling bane uh, go a little less on the immortals maybe get one or two uh, go up to 10 gate and just go really hard into storm go into those archons really get a high archon count high uh, templar count and you should be fine against banelings most of the time only against lurker and big roach counts you you really want extra immortals of course against roach swarm host you want to uh, also get a couple of immortals three four but once again that's with a, a big roach count so that makes sense um in case it's Muta, you want to be chrono boosting phoenixes and getting a battery in every single one of your bases. So always have a pylon available for that. So this pylon for my natural, this pylon for my third, and I have plenty of pylons for my main to put a battery down. Continuously can be scouting with these two oracles as well as putting down stasis traps if you're being all in. It's always very nice. Now, the moment your Templar archives finishes, um, get storm, get a couple of Templars, and. Add the extra gateways, go up to 10, perhaps a cannon. And then you can be looking towards a fort base already at the 7 minute mark. Of course, don't take this fort base if your opponent is on 4 gas and 33 drones. Like, to try to make some sense. If your opponent is going up to 75, 70, 76 workers, this is when you want to be taking your fort base. Always, there's a lot of scouting information with this build, with hallucinations, with observers, with your oracles. Um, please use that scouting information. And most of the time, uh, the common sense is correct so if you see what 35 drones in total you're not going to be chrono boosting probes you're not going to take those gases you're going to add batteries you're going to add cannons um perhaps sentries extra immortals this kind of stuff the stuff to stop an all in with um in this case we didn't get all in because my opponent is a very easy ai and sucks i mean he's not very good but he can still improve i'm sure um, you get a fort base around seven minutes. Um, start getting archons after four or five high templar. You don't really need any more high templar. Start your plus two, and you should be set for a, a good mid game push with plus two storm prism on the map already. Can do some harassment. You can get a second prism with this robo, or you can continue uh, immortal production. So that's the example build. Now let's have a look at how it looks in a replay or in a in a real game which is a replay. This was a game I played for Nation Wars last week against Nitix. Now the execution, I must admit, isn't the, the tightest because I was a little bit nervous, first Nation Wars game and all, but uh, I think it's uh, it, it was good enough to show and it, it shows some different scenarios. Uh, it shows the Muta, it shows the uh, Ravager Ling Bane composition, so you can see you get a you can get a pretty good feel for uh, for for responses here. 
Uh, the, the, the early game, I'm just gonna skip. Here you go, see me scout with an adapt. It's not that interesting. My opponent decides to play Overlord Speed. Most of the time against Overlord Speed, what I do is eventually I'll get a Phoenix to chase away the the Overlord, but not too early, not until you have your Forge and your Twilight, your, your Observer and your Immortal, all of that stuff built. Perhaps before you get your Templar Archives, it's good. So, here, I, I, I first shaded my Adept over here in between the Minerals, then I build my Nexus, and there should be a Pylon going up here. Like I said, I'm not playing the, the tightest. Now, we can have a look at how I move my Oracles. Go towards the third base, get a Queen kill. Attack the hatch a little too long. Preferably most of the time you want to get drones, but this is also okay. I mean, getting a queen for free is always nice. You can still fly around. Priority is always not losing them. Um, in this case I build Forge, Twilight, Observer, then I get my Phoenix, because I saw a lot of overlords on my side of the map. So here comes the Immortal as well. Slight supply block. And we see our opponent is droning up very heavily, if he would get any info. Even though he's only on 3 gas right now, we can see he has a very high worker count. And here we go. He takes 2 extra gases and he should take this gas. I scout this. How many gas have I already seen? I've seen 1 gas in the main. I see 2 extra gases here. So ideally I want to have some extra gases scouted here. Um, so you see I'm a little slow with taking these. But I don't see a lot of units and I see good saturation here. So I kind of can see what's going on. I kind of can see that it's a, a macro play and I think um, I do scout the Spire as well. So I know it's Mura play and Mura play is never really an all-in. So as a response to the Mura play, remember what I said. So get your Phoenixes. I already have one. Get one battery per base and really one battery per base. So one here, one over here and one over here. Now you see I don't have a pylon in position. In this case I should have built a battery here or a battery here. The, the battery is both to save, protect your probes and to protect phoenixes that are trying to save everything. Um, I continue immortal production as I saw a lot of roaches with my observer, you see? You see 10 of them. And perhaps I go a little too hard on the immortal production, but I, I feel okay. This observer is in a nice position to check any mutas from coming out. He probably should deny that with an overseer, but doesn't. Then here we go, here come the Mutas. Uh, my battery and my natural is a little too late. This is a little bit embarrassing, but I was slightly out of position. Here come my two Phoenixes, so I do end up losing about eight or nine probes, but my worker count is so good um, that this is definitely this is definitely fine for me. I, I mean, I lose a little bit of mining time, but uh, he invested a lot into those Mutas. Uh, about 700, 700, and I only got 8 probes. Forced a couple of phoenixes, but in general this is a, a good trade for me. So now I want to go into Big Immortal, Archon, and Storm Counts. Uh, I probably want to get a, a Prism on the map as well. Sadly I don't have that quite yet. Uh, I'm a little sad to say, honestly. Usually it's good to have a Prism just idling here. It ties up some of their supply defending in their main base. Now I take my fort base. The moment your fort finishes, usually you want to take your gases ASAP. Get some extra some extra batteries, some extra cannons. And here comes the push. Well, I have storm finished, so I can just storm him. These oracles are uncontested, there's no air. I should move a little forward. I move a bit too far back, but you want to be storming the banelings, obviously. And once these banelings are down, uh, meaning roaches, don't fight too well against pure charge lot immortal sentry. Should probably pop the, the Guardian Shield. Here come the Queens a little too late. And at this point I think the game is pretty much over. I'm very far ahead. My plus two is about to finish. I have a good Immortal count remaining. The only thing that's annoying is that I lost a lot of High Templar. But most of the time if your opponent has Roaches. And you have Immortals. And you're an even supply. It's a very good thing. So you just rebuild your your Templar. And you go again. And one, like I said you have a very strong plus two timing with this build with a lot of immortals a lot of archons a lot of templar so let's fast forward a little bit to that i uh, do some run buys trying to set myself up for the big push through the middle and here we go prism in the main big distraction and then i move to the middle clear a lot of creep and uh, maybe we just fight we kind of destroy him I'm a little bit afraid, of course. I always am. I'm never quite confident in my army control, but if I have such a massive army, look at the difference. I have 2k more gas invested in my army, hardly has any banelings. Uh, 
I'm completely safe. Uh, my upgrades are good. He doesn't have plus two yet. So in that case, you can always fight. And this is kind of the army you want to be building towards. And you get a very uh, stable basis with the opener that I did. So, okay. Up into the final fight. And he gets absolutely slaughtered. I mean, it's Immortal, Charge Lord, Salad, Storm against a very primitive army. So no chance there. And he pretty much just did that out. So I hope that was very useful. If it wasn't, then well, not much I can do about that. Too late now. Thanks all for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube and see you boys on Monday for a new guide.